salvation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. My mic wasn't live, so I apologize for that. Um, so is there any additions or deletions to the agenda as presented? Okay. Um, that, can I get a approval of the agenda? Can I get a, a motion for Alan? Second. Bob, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, approval of meeting minutes. I've had this on here, but I don't believe we have any meeting minutes to approve at this time. Uh, I did provide a, uh, a summary of our meeting back in July uh, that I did send out before, but that's not official meeting minutes. Um, so moving on, I'll go to uh, open public comment. Seeing no one in the audience, we can close open public comment and move into the rest of the agenda over here. So the first item, and we haven't met in a while, is about uh, the upcoming millage and the public relations revolving around that. So uh, for those of you at home, uh, BPAC has worked with the township board and the township board has uh, you know, voted to allow a uh, question on the November ballot about a, uh, a millage for bike path maintenance. And so the upcoming discussion that we're having here is about our uh, public relations and how we're going to get out the word about you know, why folks should be supporting this millage. So with that being said, I'll go back and I'm not sure if any, how many of you folks saw this, what uh, Jane and I put together um, back around um, Walk the Path. So I'll just pass these down this way. This was an insert that basically you'd be able to uh, cut it in half you gave away your agenda. Did I? Oh, I must I have. But, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I printed extras. Just, Jane needs one also. Okay. I, have a I guess, uh, you know, show of hands of anyone that's seen this before versus anyone that it might be new to. And if so, is there any questions or comments on this? Things that we, we could advise it? No, we've had a uh, a few months to digest the material. Oh, thank you. Bob, can you, can you push on your mic? I'm not sure if you're live right now. Um, it, Corey, can you hear me? I can there hear we go. We got to revive that. <laughs> but no, this is a great leaflet. It truly is. We used it during the bear door. Got a lot of positive feedback with it. I'm looking forward to using this again on other activities. Uh, like having a table at Kroger's maybe on the weekend. Uh, Alan had talked about this. He's on, we're all on board on this. We'll take the time and spend some time at Kroger a few weeks before the election and promote our millage. And a lot of people I've talked to are, are pro bike path. I am really amazed. I've never heard anyone say anything negative about our bike path. Wonderful. Thank you. Bob, have you set a date for us to uh, promote at a stand yet? I figure Saturdays or Sundays at Kroger, because mm -hmm. it seems to be, as we all know, living here, a good social event at Kroger's. A uh, couple of weeks, we'll sit down and uh, I would say two weekends a row before the election and wherever else we can use it. Uh, we have a couple of events coming up. Uh, that we can also use this leaflet and pass it out. 
we passed out a lot of these during the Baradora race here on Gross Hill and walked the paths that day. A lot of people turned out, and like I said, a lot of people enjoyed coming to it and taking some of our literature. Sounds good, Bob. Okay. Is there anything else that anybody thinks that we should be uh, discussing on air as part of this meeting rather than a uh, informal study session as far as the, the millage is concerned? Um, you might want to discuss the parameters of uh, the wording. Sure. That's a good point. So uh, you know, we do have uh, a proposal for a 0 0.15 mil investment that's going to ge generate $87,000 per year. And that's on an average about $18 per homeowner based on the median home value of $245,000. Um, know, $50,000 is for routine maintenance, including lawn mowing, path edging, correct spelling there, uh, snow removal, path perimeter debrushing, sweeping and cleaning, wood bridge staining, uh, seal coating with a environmentally friendly pavement, I should add, uh, as well as uh, additional safety markings and signage. Um, about $37,000 a year will be reserved for larger uh, capital projects, which um, you know, might not take place every single year, but you know, we need to have that, that cushion. In some years, they're going to be spending more. Some years, they're going to be spending less. So those include items such as reconstruction of bad pavement, for example, uh, with like Grow Road, we're seeing that deteriorate, and that's going to actually need to be uh, redone. Um, bridge repairs, like we did last year. Um, if larger safety improvements, drainage improvements, uh, and equipment purchases, such as new lawn mowers, uh, snow blowers, et cetera, as well as you know, other items as unforeseen at this time. Good question. Um, I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Ten year. Thank you. That's something I should probably add on to there. Brian, also, could you touch a little bit on um, our change from the the uh, silk coating we have been using to the new environmentally friendly uh, coal tar free sealing? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll explain it very briefly, and I'm sure I'm not going to do it exactly ju justice, so I'll let um, Wally add in afterwards. But uh, essentially, you know, in the past, you know, we've been using a, you know, what, what was the best practice at the time, um, you, know, uh, you know, pavement to basically, you know, seal in a lot of the, the cracks and preserve our pavement. But uh, it was using coal, star, coal tar, which uh, recent studies have shown uh, gets worn off, and it's on the, you know, people's shoes, on people's bike wheels, on strollers, and that can be put into, uh, you know, people's homes, uh, as well as, you know, any other places of activity and cause environmental concerns, especially with a gradual buildup. So, uh, you know, based on learning about that, we, as a commission, thought it was in the best interest of the public in order to uh, move to better technology out there. So, Wally, is there anything I'm missing on that point? Other than we've been using it since I've been on this commission, we switched early in my first in my term. So any work that has been done on the bike pass in this last term has been sealed with an asphaltic emulsion. And the reason that we don't use coal tar is it has something in it called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. They can run long distances and contaminate it contaminate water and they eventually get to a water which we happen to be surrounded by. Uh, they do a lot of harm to uh, living organisms and, and, and so we have uh, followed the path of many other states and uh, looks like the state of Michigan is trying to make it uh, mandatory to ban coal tar. So we, we were a little bit ahead of the curve and uh, should be proud of that. And you know you can go out and take a look at the paths that have been done. That ceiling still looks good. It's because they put three coats on. Thank you. I brought that up simply because I know we pay more for this to ensure. Uh, About 10% more. Okay. And it lasts 50% longer, so we pay less. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments on the uh, Millage Public Relations?
sounds good. Okay, before we go into walk to school day, I notice we do have a uh, member in the audience over here. So uh, if you don't mind, if you'd like to introduce yourself and let us know why you're... Sure, Brian. I, um, I had emailed... I had emailed you not too long ago. I'm Angela Sokokis. I'm the uh, new DDA director with Groziel Township. So I just wanted to come and um, take a few minutes to introduce myself. Uh, I'm personally loving all the BPAC um, events, and I enjoy that you're getting involved in meeting places um, such as the Vitaly's parking lot, Macomb Commons, Macomb Lions Park, and anything that we can do um, to encourage. Uh, residents and community members and people off island to come and um, you know help make Macomb Street uh, help return some of the vibrancy and make Macomb Street more active. I would love to uh, see you know what we can do um, in order to support that with the BPAC and the BPAC events. So just want to take a few minutes to introduce myself and and um, give you my information. So I I've talked to a, a couple of you at events. So. Thank Question. you. Can you uh, substantiate or deny a rumor that the old Vitali site is going to be reoccupied? I cannot at this at this time. So there's always conversations, and there's good conversations, and we're looking for all all kinds of great things. But I, I heard it was more than just conversation. But I, I, not that I know of. Not not anything. Couldn't happen too soon. Confirmed. We need we need businesses on the We do, we do, and we need our community members. I think it helps too when you get your community members out there and you know riding bikes and walking and walking their dog and doing things and um, business owners see that and want to participate and vice versa. So you, you will find no more passionate a group than this group. I can tell. I can tell. Just the the like I said, the sheer veracity of the events and people coming in. I know people come off island to take part and I think that's uh, we have a lot of unique things in Grozeal but I think one of the really unique things is that it's very bikeable and people can come over here and there's a lot for them to see so I agree so, thank you thank you very much thank for you. coming out thank you Angela thank you. we're looking forward to partnerships Good. so uh, move on to walk to school day so at our, one of our last meetings we, we talked about that I believe the date I'm forgetting it. It's one of the first weeks in October, I believe. It's October 2nd? 5th. 5th, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, has there been anything as far as movement uh, towards that event? And if not, is it something that we still want to do? And what type of help would you, would you need in order to pull it off, Aaron? Um, you know, I would like to step down from uh, what I've done in the past years because uh, my kids are now at St. Joe's, and so it's, it's very difficult for me to get there in the morning the past few years I haven't even been a presence when the events been going on it just it doesn't feel right um, and I think now with having new principals it's a good time to start a new relationship with them if someone else wants to take that on um, that being said if we feel that maybe that's no longer in our scope I can reach out to uh, PAT Stacy Damon was she was just fabulous for bike to school day um, she ran a lot of that and I can just reach out to her and tell her about it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of resources through the national website and things like that. And then we can more support her. Uh, there were just a lot of, it, it was very difficult to communicate. You know, the, the day it was postponed and it was, you know, parents contacting the principal, contacting Stacy, contacting me. And then it had to go back through there. And then they had to shoot an email out to the parents because we don't have any way of contacting anybody last minute. Um, so I think it would be it would be more beneficial if it was handled more by the schools. But at the same time, we don't want to push it on them if that's not something they want to do. So I can I can reach out to Stacy and see if okay. that's something she would feel comfortable with, and we can support her. Unless someone else here um, would like to take on that role. So PAT and PTO are different. Um, PTO is middle school and high school. And they, yes, they did not uh, want that. But PAT, so for the younger, the elementary schools, they were more interested.
It, our, our thought was in the past it'd be nice to involve high schoolers maybe helping at crosswalks or um, walking school buses, things like that. But again, um, that'd have to be from within the school or an organization like a National Honor Society or something. And we are just, our, our group is a little far removed. I think it'd have to be something that comes from within the school. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to agree with you that it would be better if suited to be a school-related event. Give them the ownership since they are the primary communicators with the parents, with you know, everybody else. I also think it would be great for us to have that support role. When we started this up, I thought you know, there was sort of a vacuum that there, there wasn't anybody really stepping up. So if you could make that introduction, I mean, connect with us, Stacy, and you know, maybe CC myself or a couple other people and just ask if that's something that they do want to do and you know i guess we'll play it from there I, I see you know a lot of value in having it but if there is interest at least from my perspective i think we got enough on our plate over here that we'd be happy to just play a support role well, how do you feel sir well you know it's funny if you uh we have three demographics here we have us as an organization we have the parents and the teachers and then we have the children the children love this they love it. It's something out of their ordinary. It's something new for them. Um, they really just embrace it. And then uh, as we move up the chain to the parents and the the administrators, they're a little bit overwhelmed. And, of course, when you move to our level, we're extremely overwhelmed. Um, I, I think this is a super, super event. It's important, but I just don't think that were the driving force behind it. It has to be internal. Um, again, the kids are going to benefit from this. Um, it's it's a lot of work on somebody's part, but in my opinion, it's so worth it. It's so worth getting them out and uh, walking. And they discover the bike path is what they do, and they discover their neighborhood either walking or riding their bike. And uh, we're sparking something here, and this is what we need to do. And I, I my my stomach knots up when I think that if we don't have a driving force behind this, this may stop. And that's the last thing I want to happen. So we um, maybe we need to put an effort forward to this year to turn it over to somebody and let them pick the program up and form it and shape it and take it on and, and move forward with it. I don't want it just to, to disappear because we don't have uh, a chairperson setting it up and running it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm kind of lost on even how to step up and do that other than going to the parents or the administrators and saying this is you know this is something you need to embrace I hear your concerns and I hear your passion with that and so I mean that's the same thing I want to make sure that we don't you know, we don't lose the event but kinda, if there is folks that out there that are you know, mm -hmm. we have momentum to do it yeah, look, Let's hand some stuff off if we can. We know that it works. Um, it's a lot of work, um, but it's really rewarding when you see the kids walking and riding and smiling, and you know, um, especially when they can walk to school with a parent or ride a bike with their parent to school. That is huge to them. And I think it's just really important. We shouldn't drop this ball. We should hand it off. Thank you, Wally or Bob. You guys got any comments on this? I'd echo exactly what Alan just said. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it is a huge success on this island. The past couple years, uh, the kids, when it's over that day, when are we going to do it again? When are we going to do it again? Well, hopefully soon. You know, but we're limited. Maybe in the future, uh, if we get a few more hands on board, maybe we can step in then. But right now, uh, Alan was saying, uh, we'll put the ball in their court and we'll see what happens. But we will support them 100%, and then we will, we will do our best to help them. Thank you. I know you had something to say.
echt een nood dat wij worden door de plant. Great. I think you got your answer, Erin. Erin's done a fa fabulous job. She really has. Commended to her. Well, I'm going to have some big shoes to fill. Um, next on the agenda is a topic that uh, Bob and I have been conversing over email. And Bob, <laughs> I, you, I hope you got some uh, good news to share about a potential event at the airport. Well, right now we're looking at uh, October 5th. And we're looking to uh, incorporate, uh, we're going to talk with the Rotary and make it a, a glow roll. The, uh, Mike Duker, airport manager, would like to have a ribbon, ribbon cutting ceremony on the new runway. And there's all kind of talk, so we're going to, uh, but he wanted us to pick the date in October. And so far we've come up with uh, October 5th, and we're going to put it out there and see what we can get together. And it's the new runway that is finished. Uh, and it looks like it'll be a good evening, but we're going to get with the Rotary, see if they'll assist us as we have assisted them. And also there's another Glow World tomorrow night. And we'll have a big event on the new runway. Excellent. And October 5th is, what day of the week is that? That's know? a Wednesday. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jay. But that can be exciting. Everybody coming out, riding their bike down a new runway and back and around. You know, we'll see how just about how we'll go about it between all of us. I know we can do this and with Rotary's assistance as much as we help them. This is going to be a fun night on Gross Hill. Great. I'm excited. So you made mention of Glow Roll. We've already made mention <laughs> of Tour de Eel. Jane, is there any updates that you'd like to, to share with our commission or with the folks at home? Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, in the past, we've been doing glow roll. We've been biking slowly. I was told to bike slow. And I'm realizing people don't like to bike too slow, and we kind of lost some of the bikers. So last week, first time ever, we biked faster. We biked 9.33 miles in one hour and five minutes. So that's pretty good compared to in the past, maybe five miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And John told me it's going to be weekly, weather permitting, until it gets too cold and we're closed for the winter. So we're going to meet weekly, I think 7 p.m., uh, location to be determined. Check on tourdeer.com for the location, the date, and the time. So, well. Two, tourdeer is coming. People are signing up like crazy, and I think by tomorrow night, it's a is the turnover of the price from $40 to $60. So if you have not signed up yet, sign up so you can uh, come to Glover, uh, to a deal. Three, Bob will be taking care of our table, again, to promote our brochure, and we do have a space in the hangar to promote BPAC, Global, everything else. Uh, it could be a great day. Our mail age. <laughs> so far, so far, so good. And in addition to that, Jane, would we be handing this out during that time? We can, but I would say 80% of the people are from out of town, so it may not work. But we can have it out, go to a resident only. You can have a letter sign, we can do that. And in addition to in the same family, Lazy Ride this Saturday, 10 a.m., Macomb Lion Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. You know, there's lots of conversations that happen at the booths, and you, rather than having a sign that says Grozio residents only, maybe just as part of the conversation, find out if they are a Grozio resident, and we can say, oh, you know, hey, did you know okay. about the ballot? A little more inclusive rather than, you know, just telling somebody, you can't have this. <laughs> 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 so, 
Now get the we'll have the literature there. <laughs> we know who to pass. Right. Move here. That's right. <laughs> if you move here, we'll give you this. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, it, that's a good line. Do you, <laughs> does the Rotary Club require any support? I, I know that there was an email asking about if uh, Aaron and I would be uh, willing to help out like we did last year. Um, is mm -hmm. there? Are they still looking for volunteers? Are they looking well, for us? I'm or? asking, not them. I'm asking for photography. So if you're biking or even just driving, I can have someone go to one of the metro parks, Oakwood, that way. There'll be bikers there, lower her on. I need people to take pictures of them so I can put them in their video and update the website since I'm taking care of the website. So I could use some pictures again. Any pictures like Brian he did last year, so if he's biking again, I would love to have a picture again. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I need more photographers. Yeah. Do we have anybody doing uh, you carrying a GoPro and biking the event? I asked Ted. I sent him an email. I'm still waiting to hear from him. So I'm working on getting the GoPro for me. Excellent. Okay. Next item on the agenda is something we've talked about before, and I've alluded to it, and I think we've waited long enough before we actually have a, a little look-see at this. So the um, Downriver Linked Greenways, in partnership with the uh, Department of Natural Resources, uh, as well as Living Lab, put together a gap assessment for the Iron Bell Trail, which Iron Bell Trail is the trail that goes from uh, Belle Isle in the city of Detroit uh, via two routes, one hiking, one biking, connecting many parts of our state up to the Upper Peninsula and uh, Ironwood, hence the name Iron Bell. Um, so this document specifically looks at the downriver area. And what I did was you know, print out just the sections that you know, gives an overview of the whole downriver area and then specifically for uh, Trenton and Grozeal because that affects us the most. Um, you know, this is a draft at this point. I know at some time in the future, the downriver link greenways would probably like to come and talk to us or talk to the township board, uh, either you know, together or separately. I, I don't know what way that's gonna work. But I wanted to give you guys a, a chance to look at this document and see what type of you know, comments or questions that you have about it. Um, and you know, I think as far as a summary, uh, what we're looking at from the, the Trenton and a uh, Grozeal option for this gap assessment is looking at the Jefferson Corridor from the Wildlife Refuge up to Elizabeth Park. Um, so there, you know, there's some gaps over there and then uh, Grozeal Parkway uh, connecting to our bridge and then from the bridge you know connecting along Grozeal Parkway and then including what we've talked about in the past about the uh, Chicory to Hickory and then uh, you know connecting into Macomb Street and using the, the sidewalks there to feed our downtown you know which I'm sure Angela would be happy about and uh, basically uh, becoming a spur going all the way to the end and utilizing our overlook um, so that way you can look out and see East River and all of our islands. Um, so it breaks up some of the recommendations into short-term, medium-term, and long-term items. Um, and so short-term, looking at potential wayfinding signage. Uh, you know, medium-term, um, you know, looking at you know, also doing you know, share rows or other um, you know, pavement markings, potentially uh, increasing um, the paved shoulder along Grozeal Parkway. Um, you know, a little bit longer term, potentially constructing that uh, that chicory to hickory, if that's something that the, the township board would like to move forward with, and then uh, you know, long term would be widening the Grozio Parkway Bridge. And um, I digress just a minute. As I, I found out that Wayne County might be looking at doing some you know widening or redoing the Grozio uh, Bridge in the near future. So uh, maybe that won't be as long term as we think it is. Well, I see I got eyeballs staring at me over here. Is that good or bad? <laughs> That's good. I don't want to, I won't say anything. Okay, sir. <laughs> he knows, you have to wait. I'm saying fairy tales can come true. Mm, Wayne County. <laughs> um, I should say that, you know, this gap assessment was, you know, looking at the gaps 
and that there is money set aside um, for specifically for um, iron belt projects with a, the natural resources trust fund um, with that I think with development is like three hundred thousand dollars per application that can be used I mentioned in the past there is tap funds available and the, those can be matched with the, the trust fund as well as the DNR is looking to uh, the private sector and nonprofits about you know, finding an endowment to basically fast track a lot of these projects. So, spoke enough about this. I'll open it up. Any questions or comments on your uh, this initial take on the document? Are they talking about expanding the road or expanding the sidewalk for the bikers? Uh, are you talking about the bridge itself? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that would be to be determined. Um, you know, I. I haven't seen any plans. I just saw that there is uh, a potential project for studying and potentially you know, b building a replacement bridge. So as far as the details, I don't know yet. Um, it's something I'll be looking into in the near future. Crossed. We're looking at possibly state funding for this gap, like for Gross Hill Parkway and Chicory Path, possibly? Uh, potentially. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think wow. that we have to figure out First of all, is this doable? Secondly, you know, do we have our you know residents in support of such a concept? And then you know, three, you know, do we have any you know local money to you know, help out with this? And you know, um, in a perfect world, it would be all you know state and federal money. But I'm guessing that it would be nice. At least you know, there's quite a bit of applications coming through, so they'll probably want to see a little bit of investment from us as well. So again, as Wally's saying, this might be look like fairy tale at this point. Um, but you, you got to start somewhere and like you know, have a plan and a vision and dream. So um, more to come, I guess. If you uh, the ball rolling. If you look at my notes on the bike path from 20 years ago, you'll see where that fairy tale began. <laughs> I had a vision, and I hope I and it's coming very true, sincerely sir. success. Hope that you have a successful completion. But uh, I tried to get the bridge have an exterior. Lane built on it. They told me it wouldn't take the weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last I heard about a bridge replacement, it would be a free span, not swing, tall enough to accommodate any ship that might go underneath it for all of those coal boats that won't be going to Edison anymore. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of like the bridge up in Saginaw. Yeah. We built a nice tall bridge where boats could go under, and then the boats didn't need to go under anymore. Uh, I don't know that we're ever going to see the end of coal in, in our lifetimes, but uh, the chances of us getting a bridge at the last I heard were 50 years down the road. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I guess the good thing, looking on the positive side, is at least there's something on that bridge right now. I mean, obviously it can be much better, and we can definitely uh, improve the approaches on either side, um, but, you know, if we have to walk our bikes across a segment, well, at least we can walk about them and, you know, and not worry about getting mowed down by a, a motor vehicle. I would like to encourage everyone out there, if you could, walk your bike across the bridge. Thank you. Good PSA. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hearing no other questions or comments, I'll move on to the next item. Uh, Ms. Jane Fiegel asked for me to uh, put some signs uh, topic on the agenda. So that's all I really know about this, and I'll turn the floor over to Jane. Okay. I received an email from one of the site collectors, not a resident. He noticed you probably already knew one of the stop signs northbound on Rucker is missing. Mm -hmm. I stop by on the way here. There's no hole. There's no, it's not laying down. It's either taken away or stolen. Northbound stop sign off of Rucker. Marvin. Go to see Miss Lorinda Benito. She'll get it replaced. She'll contact the county, and it's a fast mm. fix. Do you want it though? Are we still talking about signs? Uh, before we spend money on we that, we need to. We don't it. choose whether those signs are there. Those signs were put there by the county. They're their signs. Okay. Okay. The, that will be taken care of, right? All you got to do is tell Lorinda. She'll get a hold of the county. Yeah, near term, just do okay. that. You know, I think if we're going to be looking at 
the stop signs and everything in general, it should be a little bit more comprehensive and longer term. N near term, if there was something there, we should get it back up so that way we're not violating any uh, driver or bicycle expectations and causing an accident. So, you want me to contact Linda? Okay. Okay. Dude, Writing that down, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting that in the notes over here. <laughs> okay. Um, last item I have on the agenda is to announce that uh, September 17th through 24th is Michigan Trails Week. You know, our governor, as well as you know, many uh, staff at the, the state level, have uh, you know, called Michigan the, the Great Trails State. You know, we're the, the leading uh, state in the nation for trails, whether they be hiking trails, biking trails, ORV trails, horseback riding trails, um, you know, water trails. Uh, there is you know, massive amounts of routes and uh, trails out there, and we're expanding it mo moving forward. So if you have some time, please go out there and enjoy one of the many types of trails that we have. That's all I have. Is there anything else that anybody would like to add before we close? Thursday is the last day of summer, and I encourage everybody to get out and enjoy it. It's going to be gone soon. Hearing looking forward to getting you guys tomorrow. Oh. Global. Yep. <laughs> looking forward to seeing everybody at our future events. Great. With that, can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. I'm looking at the time at the moment. We have 819.